Hello, this is Mike, Little Asian Store. Today we're going to be doing the brakes on a 2005 Toyota Prius. This is a Generation 2 Prius. And just want to remember safety is first. We have this wheel chocked in the front and in the back. Okay, we just want to prevent this thing from rolling. I have also put my tire under this just in case our safeties fail. The car can fall on top of this tire. Better to buy a $100 tire than have to go fix something on your body at the hospital. Alright. I've also got a floor jack. This is jacked up to that control arm in there uh, that provides some stability as well. Floor jacks have a lot more surface area than just a bottle jack. So this also gives you stability and keeps it from tilting. Probably the first thing you want to do before you get settled in is to remove this brake cap, brake, brake fluid reservoir. It just pops off. This isn't a screw off one. All right, you're going to leave this off to let it breathe. We're going to be compressing the piston, the caliper pistons, so the fluid has got to have some place to go. And you're going to notice that. Perhaps your fluid is down. Now that doesn't necessarily mean you've leaked out brake fluid. It just might simply mean that this fluid has traveled into the cal caliper and when you compress it back, yours will go back up to the full level. Okay, that's what happened with mine. Now, in order to get started, you're going to need some tools for the brake, brake bolts. Uh, it requires a 14 millimeter, okay, and we've got a 17 millimeter. This one isn't always necessary, but sometimes you've got to get a wrench on to the interior bolt here, okay, to keep it from spinning. Other times it'll just come right off. This also is true when putting the bolts in. So, basically, you're going to take these two bolts out, which I've already done. It just goes counterclockwise. Just picture your size self inside here in the wheel well. And you will take this bolt counterclockwise out. And this bolt down here counterclockwise out. Then this caliper here, it just pulls straight out. Okay, and you're going to be left this caliper bracket all right this doesn't have to come off unless like me see all these grooves where the previous owner just drove the crap out of it if you have to take this off then it's going to require taking the axle nut off and caliper bracket bolts okay there's one here there's one down here you unbolt those pull this bracket off you have this axle nut. Best to break that one with the tires on. Okay. So even if you have to put the tire back on and lower it back down on the ground, you're going to be better off. You might collapse your whole vehicle down because of all the uh, torque requires to get this bolt off. Unless you got a nice impact gun. And kudos to you. <laughs> all right. So take your large pliers and you're going to compress this piston best if you get a piece of wood on it so you don't damage the surface just grab it here and here and you're going to squeeze it and you're going to have to squeeze it hard you could probably even use a c-clamp let's put the, the clamp in here clamp on this back side piece of wood and turn it and this will slowly compress all that brake fluid is going to go back into the brake reservoir the one we just opened okay installation Actually, let's talk about the pads. Okay, what I did was I removed these pads. This is actually the front, and this one is the back. I put them that way so I knew where to put the new pads. They're very easy, okay? But there is a little trick if you don't know it. You want to put the top in first, swing it around, and push it. Same goes for the back. What I did here, notice this is the noise indicator. 
that one goes in the back just want to do it the same just in case there's also a little divot on this back side okay so do it exactly the same then you're gonna take this off the hook it slides right back on as long as you've got it compressed now these might be in the way but they are compressible see so if it's in your way push it in push the bottom one in use your 14 millimeter bolts to bolt this thing back on okay if it starts to spin don't forget you can use your 17 millimeter on this inner bolt to tighten it up so the 14 on the outside 17 on the inside and tighten it up holding it that's pretty much it uh, everything else is reversal put the tire back on you do want to pump your brakes before you go out driving do yourself a favor take this on a chest drive but before you leave your house pump the brakes it's gonna get rid of some of this excess play in here that way if you have to do an emergency stop your brakes will be there take it around the block a few times but yeah always when you're doing things double check your bolts you don't want to drive down the road and you didn't tighten your bolts on your tire and the tire falls off or it starts jumping back and forth scare the bejesus out of you all right and make sure you re replace that reservoir cap on top so you don't have brake fluid leaking everywhere and have uh, impurities coming in that's all for now remember to be safe out there next video is probably going to be this 2007 sprinter replacing the brakes on it or a little little treat i've got a uh, homemade power station that i use um, when I go out and about, I use it twice a week for seven, eight hours a day. No generator. I just use batteries and a solar panel system. All right. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed videos like this, subscribe to my channel. Take care.